Hello everybody, this is Evan Abrams, and in this Adobe Premiere tutorial, we're going to be creating flickering transitions right on the timeline. Uh, if you're familiar with this channel, we usually talk about Adobe After Effects tutorials, but a topic came up and I find it's more applicable to do this kind of thing in Adobe Premiere than Adobe After Effects, so now's a good time to start doing Premiere stuff. So. Some of you may not be aware, but in Premiere, you can set keyframes, you can use effects. So a lot of what we're going to be doing will be immediately similar to anyone who's used Adobe After Effects. And uh, hopefully it expands what you can do in Adobe Premiere. It's not going to take a lot of time. It's pretty simple. And uh, let's open up Premiere and get into it. Oh, and before we do, if you want to see how to do this in Adobe After Effects, there is a tutorial about that on uh, this channel. And I'll put a link to that in the description and probably around here somewhere. So without further ado, let's open up Premiere and get into it. All right, so we're here in Adobe Premiere. I've got a sequence open on my timeline here, and hopefully you're far enough along in Premiere that you know where sequences go and all that stuff. I've got two pieces of footage in here. They're both on the same track. Terrific. And I want them to flicker between each other. So I want this one to continue flicker, 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 and then this one starts. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be making this first one, uh, or I can do it with the second one. It doesn't really matter which one you do it with, but one of them is gonna to have to go on top. All right, and just to make this easy, I'm gonna take these, I'm gonna unlink them, because I'm not really interested in what the audio is doing, so I'll do that and just clear the audio. Let's look at just the video here. So I'm gonna put one of them above the other and I'm gonna overlap them like this. So if you want this to happen, you will need some footage beyond, you know, so they can overlap. So as opposed to a crossfade, which is just gonna be fading between the two of them, you know, we're gonna be having this one, its opacity will go crazy and then we'll be looking at only the other one. So you can see here when I double click on this thing, it's gonna open it up, you know, up here in, uh, and whatever you call this, I guess you can get the effects controls of the clip you've selected, which is pretty great. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have the effects controls available to you here in the window. And you'll see right away, we've got access to opacity. And for some reason, there's already a keyframe on it, but I'm just gonna click that off and then click it back on. It's gonna put a keyframe right where I am. So right where the playhead is, there's a keyframe, which is right here. and it can get kind of confusing looking at these things just because, you know, this is not at the same zoom level as it is out here on this timeline and the keyframes don't really show up too good in many places. Anyway, we've set a keyframe by clicking on the stopwatch. Terrific. Now I'm going to use the arrow keys to move forward a bit, maybe one, two, three, four, and then I'm just going to slide this value here down to zero, being careful because if your mouse slides off, it can just snap back to 100. So we're gonna go down to zero, one, two, three, four frames forward, go back up, one, two, three, down, one, two, three, up, one, two, down, one, two, up, one, down, one, up. Maybe do that a couple more times. And okay, so we've got these keyframes out. And if we play that back, you can see it's, kind of doing it, but we need to change the type of keyframe. Now, if you're familiar with Adobe After Effects, you know you you know make some keyframes, then you easy ease them, and we can do that here too. You can just select the keyframes, you right click on them, and then you can choose linear, bezier, easing. We're gonna pick hold, and that means that things are just gonna kind of click on and off. Kind of like uh, click, 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 good. So now we're doing it, that's great. And what you might need to do is go in here, zooming using this bar here and coming in here and then kind of moving in and maybe you need to space them out a little bit. Maybe you need to, you know, alter them a bit, but something that's a little bit weird in here is that these things don't automatically snap to uh, the frames. So it might get a little bit hectic for you uh, doing this stuff. So just keep in mind that it's a little bit more freeform here in Premiere uh, by default to have things not quite snap to stuff. So click, click, do, 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 do. Wonderful. So I think that's good enough. So if you want to do this using keyframes, you can. You can make this flickering 
using keyframes and, uh, you know, either that or you could just, you know, go for your effects, get a video transition and, uh, you know, get uh, some of these things that are, you know, there are companies that sell third party plugins and effects to maybe make this happen. But there's already an effect in here that might do this for us already. So if this keyframe thing seems a little bit manual, you don't like messing around with it, moving these things annoys you, we don't have to do that. You know, no one says you have to do that. We could use uh, an effect in here called the strobe light. We can just take the strobe light, we can drag it out and apply it to this clip on the timeline. And uh, if you're coming from After Effects, these are called clips instead of layers. So that's something to know. Uh, but essentially, we're going to set a couple keyframes. We're going to set a blend with original keyframe that uh, we want to make sure is at 100% most of the time. So it's always blending. And then when we want this thing to start popping off, we want it to come down to zero. And because we want that to be an abrupt change, we use the hold keyframes. And then what we want to do, I guess, is mess with the strobe duration and strobe period here. And we want it to be operating by making this layer transparent. Okay. So we could probably intensify this to be instead of 0 0.05 to be sort of one frame. So you could go one divided by whatever the frame rate is, uh, which probably give you like 0 0.04 maybe and 0 0.08. So the period here is how often between um, between strobes and the duration is how long each strobe is. So saying put 0.8 between everything and do it for 0.4 is going to be essentially 0.4 on, 0.4 off, 0.4 on, 0.4 off. But it's sort of saying every 0 0.08 seconds, I'm going to strobe for 0 0.04 seconds. So that's a little bit confusing sometimes, but just remember what that means. So Maybe we'll go to the end here and we'll set a keyframe there, maybe that uh, and so we can set a keyframe using this little diamond in here. So your playhead is there, you hit this diamond, there's keyframes. So, you know, we could uh, make it so that, you know, it starts at maybe, um, let's see, point, uh, 0.16 duration and make this uh, 0.32. So making the, the this thing larger and longer, uh, further apart strobes, longer strobes, and have it you know work towards being uh, faster strobes, we could definitely do that. And then because this bar is red, you're going to need to render to actually see what that's doing. Um, so that can be kind of a kind of a process, but you know in order to actually check your work, that's what you're going to have to do. So see how that goes. Um, not super great. You're gonna need to play with your values a lot, I think. And, you know, that's just gonna be down to what kind of strobing you want to happen in your project, what your frame rate is. Those things are all subjective. So this gives you some control and you can come in here and you can, you know, ease these keyframes if you'd like. Any alteration you make, the bar is gonna go red. You're gonna need to render. But this is a way that you can do flickering here in Adobe Premiere, so you never have to go into Adobe After Effects. Uh, I actually got asked on Twitter about, you know, how do you make flickering transitions? And, you know, I thought, oh, it must mean in After Effects, which is kind of weird. I don't know why someone would do that. Because you can make perfectly good flickering out here where it's easier to edit and move clips around. So that's something. Uh, one thing to be aware of, though, is that these keyframes are relative to the time code of the clip. If you start doing like um, slip edits and stuff like that, they'll start to get bumped around as well. So unlike transitions that are kind of locked onto your timeline here, uh, using a slip edit, you know, I just grab the old uh, slip edit tool here and go like, whoa, and now kind of kind of whoopsie daisy on that one. So let me just uh, see if I can do a better example of that for you. Ugh, this freaking timeline. All right, so I'm just gonna bump the end of this. Da, 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 da. So we do that. You see the keyframes are here. I wanna do that slip edit. I do it, move it along this way. See, as I'm slip editing in here, the keyframe is moving with it because those are relative to the time of the clip, not the time of the timeline. So just be aware of those things and uh, hopefully that'll get you through. 
So just be aware of those things, and uh, hopefully this helps you make some weird techno do 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 uh, effects uh, transitions in Premiere. Anyway, this has been Evan Abrams. Uh, if you've enjoyed this Adobe Premiere uh, tutorial, then let me know. Uh, right now, my channel is pretty much all Adobe After Effects, unless you're watching this in the future and something has changed. But if you want to see more things about Adobe Premiere, the terrific non-linear editor by Adobe, uh, then definitely let me know and I'll try to do more of those. Uh, I do use this program a lot, though I don't find it as entertaining as After Effects for a lot of my work. But, you know, it's a thing and people need to know how to use it. But this has been Evan Abrams. If you have questions about this, leave them in the comments of this video. Uh, if you have any suggestions or requests for tutorials, uh, leave them in the comments or uh, send me a message on here or uh, holler at me at EC Abrams on the Twitter or get at me on the Facebook page. Links to all those things are in the description. Uh, yeah, and if you subscribe to this channel, lots more tutorials in Adobe After Effects and maybe Adobe Premiere too. What do you think? Could be a thing. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Have fun with this stuff. And if you subscribe, I'll see you around the internet. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.